So without giving anything confidential, can you just walk me through what you currently work on at Microsoft? I work on sort of a piece of software that helps manage and you know, control servers that are running the cloud essentially. At a lower level, I am working on a thing called a rack manager, which collect telemetry from the devices, issue commands to them, you know, up, issue updates, all that kind of stuff. And we're always just, you know, putting in new features that they need. So sometimes my days are involved with a lot of planning where I'm just trying to make sure things don't break because like the, the scale that our product touches is very huge because it's controlling the servers of the cloud. Like if something starts going bad, it, it could, you know, it could cost Microsoft a lot of money. You, I think, mentioned also at one point that you had to do system design interviews. Can you just talk a little bit about maybe your experience with that, whether it be at Microsoft or other places? Yeah, so I, a couple that I know for sure. Uh, I did one where they said, oh, basically make a tiny URL equivalent, a URL shortener, and you know, talk about, oh, we're going to need maybe you know, servers for these kind of things, what kind of algorithms we're gonna use, talk about how you're gonna hash these things, how you're going to store them, what happens when you have sort of collisions. So if your hash matches, how are you going to expand that as you get more and more URLs? Uh, just being aware of the kind of things that go into that, obviously, you're not gonna to have to give a full implementation about how you're gonna handle every edge case or anything like that, but just understanding how a service is going to be built up and knowing the core components of that thing at least show you know how a system is going to be put together and you'll understand probably the system you're working on at least at a level where you're saying oh the issue could be you know in this stack or this part of the stack uh, similar thing i had d different interview questions with you know building out a simple version of twitter so how are you going to store these tweets send them out you know how do you verify you know users and all that how do you store accounts all, all types of stuff like that. Yeah. And how did you, I guess, go about preparing for like these kind of system design interviews? Did you like read a lot of books on these topics? Was it just your classes or? Most of the system design stuff, I would say, comes from one of my classes. So I think I mentioned earlier a class called Principles of Software, which taught me a lot of fundamentals about computer science and code design in general. Um, there, were, there were some basis in that for m making a whole service. Cracking the coding interview, I know for sure has some like simple system design questions. I'm pretty sure one of them, I legitimately probably had something like yeah. directly equivalent at, at some other question. at some other company, right? Yeah. So they they are definitely asking these questions occasionally. They're never really that intensive, but if you've never done one, you'll probably be a little lost. So at least do you know one or two of them when you prep. They shouldn't be your main focus, but they do occasionally come up. Anything mm -hmm. else like notable in your college that you just want to talk about that maybe helped you out in your uh, progression to being an engineer, or was it those were like kind of like the main two? No, for sure. I, I would say that's honestly the biggest thing, even if you're not in a tech related major, just meeting people, being yeah. not even like close friends with people, but just being like right. kind of strong acquaintances, like they know you, you know them, you say hi to each other all the time and like share info if it's like yeah. relevant, because I don't know, I just got into so many things and was able to just see so many things just because, oh, I just knew this one person, hung out with them a couple times and you know, just kept up with them like throughout college just anytime I ran into them and you know those were lifelong connects for me. And what's your day-to-day -day like at Microsoft? Do you like have a couple of like hard problems that you have to solve on a daily basis or? It, it can be a little scary we need to make sure that we, we don't like regress on a lot of things our testing a lot of stress testing automation stuff mm -hmm. um, but along with that, just communications with other team, we work with a lot of other low-level teams who are working on chips on these servers and trying to make sure that all their stuff is functioning and that we're communicating with them. So I will have to be on call for like a week at a time every couple months. We have enough people where it's not, you know, I don't have to do it every week or something. Mm. But we'll, we have live site issues sometimes. So if another team or customers of ours are saying, oh, we're having issues with our rack manager or the servers on them, uh, we like we've tried to go through like the other teams already can you guys take a look at me and maybe like you know reset these things or try to like you know see if it's maybe an issue with the image itself on the device um so sometimes i will have to do some root causing for some live side issues which i have to i have to get a bunch of info from them and then once i get that info then i have to i have to like do some special requests and yeah. stuff to get access to the machine which can be its own can of worms depending on where it is because there's different levels of security for different types of yeah. machines. 
So that's probably the most, I think, challenging thing in your work, just on call, you would say, or is there any other? That, that one, I would say, is the hardest just because it, it's not you know, always the same situation and you have to adapt to, to debugging some things. And these are situations that I never, ever see on our own test racks that we're using. Yeah. Like These are things that we never experience, never yeah. even once. Um, so having to try to figure it out on the fly and get as much info from other team members if we don't already have like a solution for this or have seen something similar, uh, it, it, it can be a little scary at times just because you know, you're unfamiliar and you're, but at the end of the day, you have other team members, they help you with these things. Like if a situation is like really that big, we all get together and you know we put our heads down and we start having you know we start having meetings checking up on it, everybody yeah, saying okay on your meetings yeah meetings <laughs> on the meetings it's like okay let's rehash this problem what have you seen so far in your in your root cause analysis what 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 can we help you with what can we test if you need it to like sometimes we're just like okay this request that you guys are asking us to implement is like too much or it's outside of our scope or it would require too much overhead we need to redesign this thing so Another hard part is just working with these other teams to try to make sure their features work within the current scope of what we are already handling and doesn't impact our like our timings, like our SLAs. We, we don't want any data to go to people late. We don't want people to say, oh, now when I run this command, it takes three seconds longer or something yeah. silly. Like We have to make sure things are pretty much always running at the same speed and that, um, again, no regressions. A lot, lot, of, lot of testing. Feature okay. goals in your career. Mm, okay. Career-wise, this one's a little tough because I, I'm still trying to think about what path is like best to go down. You know, on my own team, I've seen senior software engineers go into a managerial position where, you know, they're still involved with all the technical things, but wow, they have so many meetings and yeah. they have to manage so many people. That, that can be a little daunting. Maybe my mind will change more as time goes on, mm -hmm. but I, I think preferentially I'd probably stay more in like a senior engineering role or architecture. I still yeah. want to be involved at doing tech stuff as time goes on, but I don't know if I want to be the one handling a team specifically. I think something like architecture would be cool because uh, designing is a pretty cool thing, especially because when, when you're involved in design, you get to see how so many different things interact. Like it wasn't even until I was in charge of certain features on my team that I even understood what some other close by teams did, right? Or yeah. how they interacted with us. But once I had to start going to those meetings, looking at these design documents, it really opened up and made me understand our product like a lot more yeah. and what things would make sense to use going forward. So I think it would be cool to be able to do that on even larger scales or just do it, you know, more long term. Yeah.